Hi, welcome to part two of my first person shooter controller tutorial. The clip that you just saw was from my game that I'm working on, it's called Spring and Fall. If you want to test it out, you can actually join my Discord, it's in the description. And you can play test the game and give me feedback and suggestions and follow the game as it updates. This part of the tutorial is probably going to be a bit shorter than the first part. I'm going to try and keep them shorter so I can release them more frequently and so they're a little bit less daunting for me to make. So in this episode we're going to be fixing an issue from the last episode with the jumping as well as improving the slope movement and making it really reliable and solid. Okay, let's get right into it. Alright, so I've gone ahead and updated the room a little bit so that we can test some uh, slope movement. You should be okay to do this yourself, um, just so that you know for adding the ramps. Uh, you can just add a mesh instance, choose a prism mesh, and then go up to here uh, in the mesh menu and go create trimesh static body to create the collider. And after that you can scale the ramp and you can change the material here if you would like to as well. So just as a recap for last episode, let's hit play. You can see we have a FPS controller. You can look around, you can jump, and you can actually move up of slopes. So that's good. There is a small issue with the slope movement uh, on down slopes in particular. So if I walk down this slope, you'll notice that I'm actually kind of bouncing down a little bit. Um, so we're gonna fix that in this episode. And we're also going to fix one other issue, which is the jumping. So if you just press space over and over again, you can see that we can essentially fly. You can see how you might want to do double jumps and things like that, but we will change it so that you can only jump if you're on the ground. Firstly, there was one small little thing that I wanted to mention before we move on. If you're following this series, um, previously I had the brackets in the wrong place for rotate Y. So you can see for rotate X, we have the degrees to radians function wrapping the mouse motion, and then the mouse sensitivity was applied separately to that. Whereas for rotate Y, we've got the whole thing wrapped in degrees to radians. So I just moved the bracket over there. You might wanna do that if you're following along. So let's start by fixing the jumping. So here is the logic for the jumping. Uh, you can see that every frame we check if they press the jump key, and if we they do, we just add this gravity local force. Uh, there's nothing here that actually checks whether the player is on the ground. And luckily for us, uh, the kinematic body actually has a very convenient method called is on floor. All we have to do is add this, so now we're checking if they press the jump key and they're on the floor hit play and let me spam the space key and you can see I can no longer fly. I mentioned that the slope movement is broken and this is one of the things that is really frustrating about this slope movement that we're going to fix. So because we're checking if we're on the floor when we want to jump, uh, when we move down slopes you can see that the player does this little hopping thing so sometimes you might be moving down the slope and pressing the space key and there's no jumping because you're not actually on the floor. So let's fix that. First, I want to mention someone from my comments, um, it should be up on the screen now, who mentioned this particular function which makes movement on slopes much, much better than what I was doing before. So previously we were changing the, <laughs> that's my cat, I don't know if you heard him. Previously we were changing the gravity based on whether we're on the floor or not. So if we're not on the floor, the gravity's straight down, and otherwise the gravity pulls you towards the floor normal. This is a little bit unreliable, so we're going to use a different function. Okay, so I'm looking at the kinematic body documentation, um, and you can see if we go to our methods here, there's this magical little method called move and slide with snap. So if we go to that, you can see moves the body while keeping it attached to slopes. Sounds an awful lot like what we want. The way this works is it uses this snap vector. As long as the snap vector is in contact with the ground, the body will remain attached to the surface. This means you must disable snap in order to jump, for example. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and implement this. So the first thing that I would recommend we do is just setting up a snap vector 
that's always available to us. We don't have to redefine the variable every frame. So var snap vector. And in this uh, physics process, we're gonna change a couple of things. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change how the gravity works a little bit. So we currently have, if it's not, if we're not on the floor, the gravity local builds up. That's exactly what we want. And otherwise it sort of pulls us towards this floor direction. We don't want that anymore. We're gonna use the snapping to do that. So let's change this to vector three dot zero. So what we need to do is define this snap vector so that it's pointing towards the floor if we're actually on the ground. So let's go ahead and default the snap vector to vector three dot down. And uh, something that I find helps is we can change the snap vector so that if we're on the floor, the snap vector is actually pointing in the opposite direction to the floor normal. Um, I've just found that this gives slightly more reliable results when you're walking around on the slopes. So I would recommend you do this. The final thing is that uh, if we want to jump, we're going to have to actually disable this snap vector. So this is our conditional for the jump action. So we're going to change the snap vector in this case to be vector3.0. So if you follow the logic here, we default the snap vector to just straight down. If we're on the floor, we point it towards the floor. Uh, but if we hit jump, we override both of these um, and just set it to zero. We can change this move and slide function to move and slide with snap. And the second argument here has to be the snap vector. So let's play that and see what it looks like. You can see we can still jump, which is good. And you can see that we can still move on slopes reliably. And let's see what it looks like moving down a slope. Uh, you can see that this is significantly more reliable and now I can actually jump off of these down slopes without any issues. So once again, major thanks to the guy who mentioned that. I actually made my game much, much nicer to play as well. So this is huge, highly recommend, um, underrated strat for slope movement. Before I go, I just wanna explain a little bit more about exactly what we've done, just in case you're a bit confused. Um, so with the player, uh, you can see that the origin is set up to be at the bottom of the player object. And I believe this is where the snap vector actually originates from. So I'm gonna work on a diagram here to sort of help us understand what's happening. So by default, the snap vector is pointing downwards. If we're on the floor, uh, we are actually on the floor here, but say we're on a slope, we set the snap vector to be the opposite direction of the floor normal. So the green arrow is the floor normal. It might be actually slightly wrong. It's probably more like that. That looks a little bit better. And remember that the normal vector is pointing perpendicular to the surface. So the snap vector is going to be the exact opposite of that. And that's gonna sort of pull us into the slope when we're walking around. And that means that when we're moving downhill, this is where we get more reliable movement from, right? We're moving this way and this snap vector is going to pull us towards the slope so that we don't sort of hop off like we saw previously. Of course, uh, because this snap vector is pulling us towards the ground, we uh, have to disable it when we jump. So that's what this part here is doing. Hopefully that uh, is a clear explanation of how this works and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe if you want to follow these tutorials and support the channel. Have a good one.